Okay. Um, oh, so this is a talk about uh, hardware, um, improving the hardware support for, uh, especially user point of view. Um, and it's all about making a uh, hardware report, uh, putting stuff in database and doing something like it's done for software and popularity, popularity contest or just find another name. Um, so we actually know what are the devices used by our users uh, and how well we support it. Okay. Um, when it comes to uh, supporting some hardware, uh, obviously um, there are two aspects. The first is the upstreams have to support the, kernel, the given device. Uh, we need to have a driver. Um, and then to support this device, uh, even though it's in the kernel, it's released, we have to configure this device. Um, obviously, nowadays, um, configuring a device is usually very transparent for the user. I mean, uh, we're very far away from Linux 2.0 or Linux 1.0, where you had to write your modules files, where you have to uh, configure XORG uh, very, um, in a very complex way. But uh, So usually it's a maintainer who does the job. But to some extent, um, the user may sometimes have to do some task on his system to get better support for the hardware. Uh, by the way, I've made it so uh, we have quite some time for questions and comments, so if you have some, just don't hesitate. There's probably a microphone somewhere here. Um, okay, so um, we have different populations which have different needs when it comes to improving the hardware support. Um, I've put up put the user first, I've put the developer, it's really um, um, uh, three different kinds of issues. Um, for, each dis for each supported distribution, um, we need to know how many people use a given hardware. Um, just to know where we should focus, what we should test, which scenario are uh, the most sensible to test. Uh, that's really useful. Also, um, it can be used to say, hey, we are, not so, we're, we are not supporting, we don't have anything to support, uh, maybe a webcam inside a laptop. And people ha don't really need it, but if a lot of users uh, have maybe so such webcam, we might be interested in providing, providing such support. Um, and then, uh, The device, the, the developer wants to know if uh, a given device is supported by a given distribution because we are now uh, providing some backports and also obviously to release a given distribution. So when we freeze the distribution, we want to make sure we have, we support uh, common devices. Um, And really getting into how it's supported, it's not just a matter of do we have a driver, uh, but if every user have to make a configuration to get the device to work, um, and we can automate it, it's cool. Uh, so again, if we have some kind of popcorn which is capable of saying um, we have 50% of our user which the driver is loaded and 50% for which it's not loaded, Maybe we can do something uh, to avoid the, the user to have to configure a system. So having those figures are really helpful to improve the situation. It can be also, uh, because hardware support is such a large topic, we'll see it later, we might also be able to test uh, actually the device and say, does my audio device actually provide um, output some sound. The user needs. Um, the user wants to buy hardware. He wants to know if it works. 
the user wants to install Debian on existing hardware and he just says, should I take stable or testing or what else, or will I be able to uh, get better support? Um, so he doesn't have to download three times a distribution to actually install it, uh, especially for new hardware, I mean. Um, so that's the kind of question the user has, obviously. Um, And to some extent, some device will always require uh, some configuration. Um, hopefully, uh, the less the better, uh, but maybe installing some non-free firmware or just saying for a printer which paper size you want, that's the kind of configuration. We can do it automatically. We also have the vendors. Uh, they have in the talk last year about um, some vendors being interested in having some regression test to say does my device still work with some famous uh, Linux distribution. Uh, that's also a need they have. Um, they want to know which uh, distribution is supposed to work. Um, and if they're capable of getting those information quickly, they are more likely to advertise the fact that, hey, um, Debian's, um, uh, we believe that Debian works on your system. Um, they may choose to officially support or not uh, the hardware, but um, if they have an easy way to test it, they would, I mean, it's likely that they would uh, advertise it. If we can provide automatically so, some URL, so um, so use some provider can say, just go to this page and uh, you have some database which are getting to be updated. That's also something that would interest them. As we've seen, the, it's, the hardware support is something uh, kind of wide area uh, for the different use that are going to be made and how we can collect those information. Uh, typically, I've come to divide this in three area. Uh, especially when it comes to make a tool to improve the situation. Um, on one side, uh, this is the part which really interests me, is to have some periodical inventory of the user, I mean, if that user wants to provide such data to Debian. Um, so we know which devices are currently used. This is really exactly what Popcorn is doing for software. We also uh, could want to provide some automatic testing uh, either for vendors, for users. Uh, we could imagine that some user would be very interesting having a Debian Live CD with the latest kernel to have uh, improved hardware support, getting into a shop, booting on that CD and having automatic tests. Uh, that would be nice. Uh, also that user maybe can boot on this CD and go online and say, okay, this one is not working, but you will just have to do this and this, and it's going to work. Um, so automatic testing is another area uh, which is uh, something uh, which has different needs and requirements, we'll see later. And then we can, to improve hardware support, we might also want to um, ask for user feedback. Uh, Detecting if a sound card is actually working is, I mean, sometimes a bit tricky because maybe it's playing, but the sound is muted or it's all go to the last speaker. So uh, having some feedback from the user uh, is also a source of information to our improve hardware support. Um, as you'll see later uh, during this talk, I'm really focusing on this first part. Uh, and currently, um, I couldn't find a tool which really uh, fits these needs. Uh, there are some tools to do some testings. There are some tools which uh, focus on getting user feedback, um, which could be useful too. Uh, but I believe it's not um, because we already have such tools in some way. If we get the user feedback. We have the bug tracking systems, we have mailing lists, obviously. Uh, 
where people can just come and say, this device is working, and they provide an installation report and say, this device works. So the user feedback, we have it. Um, and it's not the main part of my interest. Doing automatic testing is really uh, something which is very interesting. I personally don't have the skills to uh, do those tests, uh, and I believe that's another problem. Uh, collecting existing devices is really important, so I'm focusing on the first part right now. Um, why a hardware database? Because if we want to be something which we can easily query, uh, getting user to a mailing list and say just a uh, search inside the mailing list is not very uh, easy. And then from the mailing list we might want to point, uh, I mean, even if the user finds a bug report, or we want to have something which provides synthetic information uh, and not having to pass a whole bunch of uh, mails over the time. So, um, having those data, uh, or many data, and as much as data as we can over the time in a database helps. Uh, it doesn't prevent having installation report or linking it to our installation report. Um, also, some people, I mean, if you go to IRC channels, it's like, can you pass me in this file, and then can you pass me in this file? Uh, we could improve this situation too by just saying, uh, I have upl uploaded uh, my, my, my the configuration of my system, and you can just go and click on this URL, and you will see all the details about my system, uh, DMI information, PCI information. Um, Maybe in the future we might want to allow the user to easily upload some log files. Or what we can't really do at the moment, um, especially automatically, we can't advertise and say we support those devices and we don't support those devices. Uh, we'll see in any, we'll have something, but uh, it requires manual maintenance and it's not fun. Um, it's difficult for us to say, okay, um, vendor, foo, uh, we have lots of users which use your device but um, are not happy because uh, they have to install the firmware which is not available and uh, it causes problem. Or, um, hey, look, uh, you have a competitor which is doing pretty well on the Linux market because um, he supports much better uh, Linux than you do, and if you are providing more support for the Linux community, you could uh, um, get more customers. There are obviously many more things we could do if we could um, process the database and get uh, retrieve information out of the data. In any um, Sorry. Uh, since Debian boot exists, uh, people um, send bug reports, either for device which works or device which doesn't work, uh, and this works already pretty well. Um, so there's a lot of traffic on this list, and people really play the game. Um, you know, for those who doesn't know, I suppose there's not so many. Oh. Shit. Yeah, bug reports are typically like this. Well, it's a mix of automatically. Yeah. The installation report um, provides some information that are automatically gathered from this local system, and then the user can put its feedback. Um, so we have. Uh, various information about the system, how it was configured, and then enumeration of here it's the PCI devices, uh, and the user here 
could say okay this is working this is working this is working and yeah cool is the video streamed currently or well oh. should I if people are watching the video over the streams you can get uh, uh, the slides from the from the page with, um, of the talk. It's downloadable and available. Do you have some questions so far? Well, I like to know if the script installation report also uses the information from DMI decode. It does uh, if it's installed on the system, which is installed by default. Okay, I, I think this is for me very important because when I buy new hardware, uh, I, I cannot ask somebody at a shop, uh, can you give me the output of LS PCI? I only know it's, it's some sort of main board or some sort of notebook and I think it's very nice to have this information mostly uh, also on, on the re installation reports. Uh, be, 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 because I think this is what what the end user is seeing. If if he wants to buy a piece of hardware, he only sees this is a Lenovo or Acer or whatever hardware, and uh, nobody sees the LSPCI IDs. We we could. Um, I'm pretty sure there's lots of people who are interested in window in Linux in Debian, but have some skills in in Windows environment and could provide some scripts to extract appropriate information even though what you said is yeah, knowing the name of the diva of the system is very important is very useful uh, if I go back to I hope there's no sensitive no it was here it was stripped by the user but um, um, if DMI decode is available the information will be retrieved uh, for those who don't know, DMI are, is a standard for to publish uh, information about the the local system of the hardware, uh, and it's more like documentation built into the the hardware than uh, actually a way of probing uh, uh, the device. But it's very very useful because we we really know this is a HP uh, notebook uh, this model. Um, how do we support? What do we have for support in for hardware support in this one is pretty huge. So maybe I'm going to use to open it locally. Uh, we have a wiki page which extracts the information from the kernel and just publish it. Yeah, here it is. Uh, and so if a user know, I mean this is more like for advanced users uh, who already knows and do a PC LSPCI, get the PCI ID devi device ID and if they Google or whatever search engine they use for the PCI device they can reach this page which really is um, because uh, each module lists which device it handles, we can uh, synthesize it and publish it. And this is what it's patched about. And then we have some links. Um, so maybe, so this device, uh, it's handled by the module IWL 3945, and we have a mechanism automatically link to the wiki page which documents what could be done if anything 
uh, for this given wireless adapter. And useful. Is something I would like to see. Uh, uh, I mean that 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 we we are currently missing and would be a great uh, enhancement also from this database is that we currently have well a very good uh, hardware support in most uh, notebooks but uh, what well, I remember from last year's talk from uh, Intel the Les Watts uh, initiative well from uh, I've gathered from that talk and from the r running power top some advice for example uh, you don't need a webcam, it's supported. Just remove the mod module and you're saving two watts. Things like that could be also automated I if they were in a, da in a database. So uh, pro uh, profiles for uh, lo uh, low power consumption and so on could be done. I mean, because uh, those tools are meant for users like us currently and they are out of the reach for uh, most of the audience. Yeah, um, you're correct. And we can really what we can do is something because here it's named as you may see it's named the page is named device database but yeah okay it's generated generated automatically uh, but it doesn't really have to do with the database uh, and we can uh, create a database with automatically link to say this is this device is supported by this driver so just have a look at this wiki page uh, for hints on how to use it. We have the same for USB. Uh, USB is a little, bo little bit more difficult because uh, it's sometimes supported by user lens tools like for smart cards but we can still extract the information and publish it. Uh, So we, here again, it's an extraction of the package. Oops, formatting issue. Uh, with all the devices which is published, and we have some information of which device, which uh, package supports this uh, module. Uh, because currently, we have no tool to say user, um, okay, you have this smart card reader. Uh, you should install this package to get a good support. I know there's some work in for this topic, but that's something we need. And by publishing those information, the user can easily find uh, which package they can install. Uh, there are some tools um, you can find on the internet uh, which are aimed to improve hardware support. Uh, one quite well known is Smalt, which is initially by uh, originally from Fedora project. It's used by Red Hat. It's used by uh, OpenSUSE since version 11. Um, it's a tool which uh, is nice because it has both a GUI and a cron job. So the cron job can send uh, data periodically, and the GUI can be used to ask the user about. Uh, uh, how work is working, how well it's working. Um, from this, uh, this tool is apparently used to provide, uh, to help uh, Red Hat uh, to certify the hardware. Um, one problem I found it in this tool is that it requires Python, uh, which basically we means it doesn't work in Debian installer. Uh, and as we'll see later uh, in this project, I really wanted to be able, as soon as possible, to let the user report or, in the other way, query information to see what should I do to improve, to, to why, um, in one way. So it's, I'm trying to install Debian, but the hard disk is not supported, is not supported. So the user should still be able, able, able to upload information and say, my device doesn't work. On the long term, we could also imagine the opposite. It's the, device, the user is in front of his computer and says, I can't install my computer because it seems the hard disk is not supported. 
So if the user was capable of uh, uh, querying a website and say the database, um, okay, there's something wrong, just let me know uh, um, why my hard disk is not supported. And the user could have um, uh, the web page probably rendered in text and displayed in Debian installer. And maybe that page could say, um, you just have to do this to so it works. Or you have to download this version of Debian, or you have to configure the BIOS in this way. Because, yeah, many users just don't have many computers at home to be able to browse on one computer and um, actually install on the other. So it means you have to, oh, it doesn't work, I have this, mes this error message, I write it down, I reboot, uh, I connect with my previous operating system. Oh, this error message, okay, I should do this, and we try again. You know, you've probably experienced that. Ubuntu, um, Ubuntu used to have a product named HWDB. Um, they don't seem to uh, include it anymore since Depper, uh, but they have a very interesting tool, uh, which is also Python-based, which is really about getting certified hardware. Um, and it's apparently meant to be automatic, automatic and uh, it's very, very interesting. Um, but again, it's Python-based, and it doesn't have anything like automatic and periodic uh, data collection to know which is currently used. Um, Something like BusyBox. Um, okay. uh, but not BusyBox, obviously. Come back to you. Uh, there is some other distro which have some other tools. I couldn't find any which were very, uh, which really fit what I wanted to do. Uh, hardware for Linux is a very interesting initiative because um, it have a very simple script with, unfortunately, some C codes um, to be able to uh, report and look up if a device is supported. It's meant to be multi-distribution. Um, it's really minimalist, um, and uh, obviously they don't work well, made, made it in a way to so it's uh, so each distribution builds its own database and be able to connect to its own uh, website or wiki or whatever. Um, that's an interesting small script for collection. They provide some information. That's that's quite interesting. They have a quite good website. Uh, it's probably something uh, let's say we want T16. No, excuse me. I'm not on the right w search page. Yeah, the user can browse and see all the devices and get uh, some hints of what is working, what isn't working. Um, you can know which... For a maintainer it's interesting because you can search a device and say what... which system use uh, this device. There are some interesting aspects in this website. Really, it's their, their own thing, which is meant to publish uh, their own data. And uh, one thing we want is to be able to point user for to our own pages. And we want to be able to say, in these pages, you should do this in Debian to fix your problem. Um, 
okay, there are some other tools, as I mentioned. Uh, OpenSUSE has switched to Smolt. Uh, actually, Smolt was initially meant to be cross distribution. They haven't reached this um, goal yet, but it's interesting. Um, we haven't been to this website. But uh, it's it's interesting too because you you, you have a list of uh, devices and you when you at some point you can click click on a link and get to a wiki page which explains what you should do to get better support for this hardware. Hello. I should get there. And no, it won't show. Again, this website has some inter interesting feature to search uh, supported devices uh, when you browse. Um, it's pretty well done. Okay, so why yet another tool? Um, as I explained, we uh, want to report uh, existing this system and existing device and uh, collect all the information. Um, we want to have as many as possible information in the long run. Uh, we said we want GMI decode because that's what the user know. Uh, PCI information because um, that's uh, an effective way to know what's inside the machine. Uh, ideally, we would like to have this reported on the first boot, uh, so uh, the user could give some feedback maybe. Uh, and we very soon have those information, even if the user just try one on the system once on the system. Um, on this page, when there's three star, is probably something we really want. I mean, that's I considered we wanted really for. And two star is we don't really. It's not so important. And uh, one star, it's it wasn't my, the focus, the main focus of uh, my project. Uh, so, we want to be able which device we, uh, are installed. We want to report weekly, so we don't just know. Oh, some people have had this device at some point. We want to know are they still using it uh, currently. Um, we want it to run on a very wide range of setups. Uh, we have Embedian uh, derivatives like Embedian, which are really tiny and they probably still want to have some uh, to be able to run this device. This um, this tool so they know how many people use the uh, product. It doesn't have to be hardware specific. Uh, it should be possible to report either if the network is broken or the hard disk is bro is not. Um, when I mean broken, uh, when the network connectivity doesn't work, or when the hard disk doesn't, when the user can't store uh, data, so it should be quite flexible to, and it should be easy for the user to submit uh, his report when something doesn't work. And obviously, it's meant to be uh, useful to improve hardware support. I mean, it's not just collecting data for collecting data. And this is where I hope some of you could will have some feedback on where we should focus. Uh, at some point, I think it's 
the whole thing could become something really useful so the user just don't have to go to Passbin and you know an IRC channel and say okay this is uh, this file this is this file uh, my LSPCI goes this and LSPCI my dash v uh, dash d 02.8 I mean the user don't want to do it so if we can make it easier for them to report what's their system so other people can help them that would be great how have I designed my project so far um, I'm collecting data from three sources. Uh, I am analyzing the packages uh, like I used to in the wiki page. Uh, so I get the kernel, I get all the aliases in the kernel, I will see, uh, and say, okay, we are supposed to support all those devices. Then the second step, uh, the second source of data is to have a tool to, on the live system, to query. Uh, the device that are on this system. We also fetch some information from external sources, um, obviously like PCI IDs, have the description of PCI. Put all that in the data database and let the user uh, query the database. So um, any system or any device or any driver we support can be seen and the user can actually find it. Uh, so a user should be able to say, okay, I am going to run uh, Debian Lenny, uh, will this device work? Uh, a developer wants to know, okay, uh, what are the device supported by, handled by these modules? Um, and with all three sources of information, we can have a pretty good uh, overview of all that. Um, I mean, for those of you who have used Linux for a while, uh, or computers for a while, um, before it was very difficult to know which driver, which devices were handled by a given driver because uh, it was really probing uh, the devices. Nowadays, uh, PCI buses, USB buses and so on, just expose the list of devices they are supporting. We can enumerate it and because we can enumerate it, the package themselves usually contain a list or some logics um, to know which device are supported. And this is why here we can just collect the information uh, from uh, existing packages. We can get, as we see on the wiki page, we can just interrogate the kernel uh, modules and know which devices are supported by this kernel. This is how it's done. Uh, typically, as you probably all know, um, a module in Linux uh, has aliases and... Um, okay, so... Oh, yes, I can't. Um, the aliases you see in this list are uh, the magic thing in the kernel to know that uh, a device which vendor ID V four times zero, eighty eighty six. This is Intel, and then you have D, and four times zero, one O D F. This is a PCI ID, and the the kernel can uh, know that it has to load the driver E one thousand E. So we can just uh, query all those devices. In the same way, um, other tools which handle hardware usually have uh, a way to list the supported devices. Um, so here for smart cards, um, which is using the user and tools uh, libusb. In the file which contains a list of supported devices, you have the vendor ID, the, you have the PCI ID, you have a description. So again, we can just collect those information, put it in the database, and automatically say to the user, this device should work on your uh, system. Um, yeah, obviously the kernel exposes uh, the device which are currently connected to the system. Uh, you can also usually know which driver use uh, 
handles a given uh, uh, device. This is really uh, this has been really improved since uh, CFS. Now, if you want to analyze a live system, uh, the PCI. We over. Oh shit! Shit. Um, sorry. Uh, okay, the PCI ID again. Uh, the PCI is exposing. So as I mentioned, uh, uh, we get all the information, the class of device, uh, PCI ID to identify this device, and finally it exposes which. Uh, driver is using it. Is using it. We have some other source of source of information from the kernel, from DMI data. Um, so the tool, of, uh, the tool on the tool on which I have worked is a tool which uh, is a collector. It's written shell scripts, so it's uh, and it should be 100% BusyBox compatible. Uh, so we can integrate it in DI later. Um, it should be able to fall back if one tool to query is not available, we should try another way. Uh, because we really want to make sure we capture all the data we can uh, regarding the current install device. Um, the output is put it is in XML file because we want to be able to add more and more information over time without having to modify all the tools all the way. Uh, Privacy is obviously a concern. Uh, serial numbers for support can be a problem. Uh, we don't. We want to make sure we we filter this out properly. Or also give the user the choice, the level of privacy he wants to uh, preserve. Um, okay, just. That's a that's a project actually I have restarted. I think four times I've restarted this project with different point of view and wondering what was the best way to to achieve it. Can you read? No, you probably can't see it with the colors. Yeah, is it better? Um, so it's a, a we gen just generate uh, and. Uh, an XML file with all the data which we have collected uh, in it. Um, we also obviously want to make sure we know which di distribution the people are using. Um, I'm still not sure. I think we probably want to include the list of packages on the system uh, to match and maybe at some time say, oh, uh, all the people who use this device seems to use to have this package, even this package has a low popcorn or um, that's an idea from Peter Hanoskin. Okay, I'll, I'll just keep it. Uh, because um, I want your different point of view as a user, as a developer, maybe as upstream, on what would be the most useful information and should we tr um, have focus on hardware testing, on uh, uh, Collecting the the device uh, as I say, kind of hardware popcorn. Um, so, if you have some suggestions of what this tool should focus on doing, I'm very interested. How many of you are um, maintaining some packages which uh, involve hardware support uh, directly? Maybe not so. I've got a question about uh, how to detect that sound is working. Can that done be via a script or does the user have to check a box and say, yeah, I can hear something? Yeah, that's, um, we really have, as we said, we really have three areas in when we do hardware, t when we want to improve hardware support and 
collect how that how device are working. Uh, currently, my project is focused on the first part, which is collecting the list of data I use. Uh, I think some tools, some the, like the tools from Ubuntu, is, are very interesting because they are concerning actually testing the hardware. Uh, but it requires to have some high-level language or, I mean, uh, bigger installations to, to be able to perform those tests. Um, usually it's half automated and it requires uh, user intervention. Yeah, m my experiences with Thound is uh, that it's no problem to, to get the kernel driver for the audio device I'm using, but then um, the audio device needs needs uh, some certain uh, kernel module settings because of the the audio uh, codec. Uh, often you have the same uh, sound chip, but the codecs in the audio chips are very different and need very different option to to function at all. So if you have the wrong settings, uh, the kernel recognizes the sound chip, but you don't hear anything. Yeah, and that's why that's where having a website exposing properly all those information is interesting because uh, we can point to user and say you are using this device on this driver, um, and those two are used on those systems, uh, and we can have a link specific for okay you have um, SND Intel something for me. Uh, and you're using a ThinkPad, so just visit. You can visit this page where it has information, uh, and here we can document that you should use this option for the kernel. Um, this is really basically what uh, I want to do: uh, is to be able to point the user to source documentation in some way and telling it that this PCI ID is handled by this device. Making some automatic tests is another topic, which I think we would be very useful to have some people working on it, but uh, it's already such a huge project. One other thing, do you know there's a web site, kmuto.jp, which also have the hardware uh, list. Uh, maybe we should include some of the machine, uh, of the information or database into this thing? Yes, I'm aware. Uh, we talked together with, <laughs> maybe he wants to, some this um, something about all that. Uh, hi. Uh, okay. Uh, I've developed Debian HCLP since uh, four years ago. Uh, my idea is simple. Uh, Linux kernel provides module PCI map. Uh, is a map. Uh, a bit so uh, at this time, uh, I got thirteen thousand uh, over. Reports, yeah, very nice. So my next target is uh, USB. Uh, uh, if uh, it would be nice uh, if we can use the LS USB, uh, as same as LS PCI. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it was harder than I imagined. So maybe uh, Franklin helped me. <laughs> yeah, well, it's one thing. Uh, I think this this web page is very useful. Maybe we should make it a um, sort of official Debian web page. Um, it's actually pretty well documented. Uh, PCI Debian. You think it should be enough? HCL Debian. Yeah, with, with the space HCL and then Debian. Dot org, it should be? No, just, just search oh. for it. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, Visited for a while. Uh, 
it's yeah um, it's similar photon that uh, uh, it's all about getting it in the kernel and pushing the data uh, some some deva and it's it's a large project um, uh, uh, I was very happy to know that uh, uh, I could make cancer shift so we can talk about it and uh, I'm expecting to get some feedback from him and see how we can uh, maybe I can just join my colleague to his tool and expand and pfft. it's really all about one thing that would make that uh, page a lot uh, more useful to me and a feature I've been missing uh, is the ability to actually know when the driver appeared in the Linux kernel. I would like to know that in 2.6.18, for example, this audio card started working. Uh, that means, of course, you have to keep track of all the kernel version numbers in Debian and map that to modules. Uh, but it would make, me make it possible for me to look up a given laptop or a given machine and know which Linux and Debian distribution is going to work with this laptop. That's that's something you um, I wanted to point it out. Uh, is that making the collector is rather the easy part uh, of the game, and really, what is really tough uh, is the website. To I mean, once we have all those data uh, of uh, people reporting and saying my dev my laptop has all those devices and those drivers are loaded, and maybe. Uh, my etc modules has those files, and you know, uh, and then we have also imported uh, we over, so we're going to have to to finish very quickly. Um, what is difficult is doing to is to do some data mining and expose it in a way which is uh, useful for the user and f user being being can be the end user, the developer, whoever. And that's exactly, yeah, I completely agree with you, uh, Peter. Um, yes, this is a page. <laughs> um, if some people have interest in, in, in this topic, uh, we can meet. If you have ideas, I'm around all the time. Uh, so um, the, the collector still needs to be improved. Uh, I'm not creating some stuff. Uh, we need some more work uh, on getting the information from inside the package. Uh, so, for instance, currently I'm not analyzing the um, uh, module assistant can, uh, kernel modules uh, that we should compile and get them and extract the information. Uh, I haven't v investigated anything about supporting non-Intel platforms, which doesn't necessarily DMI information. Uh, Sometimes it's in the etc proxy pay info. Um, there's lots of work to be done on the website uh, to expose the data and then to be able to analyze and say, okay, I have this PCI ID, it's in this version of Debian, in this kernel, uh, and it's working for most people. Uh, it could be integrated in Debian Live to expose some soda, some it would be nice to have a live CD so people can just boot it in a in a shop and upload the information and uh, consult them later. Uh, it would be nice to have some Windows collector or Mac OS collector so people can again go to a shop, uh, download this small tool uh, and get the information and upload them to the website. Um, as I said, um, small has something that really nice is uh, Smalls gives you an ID, so it's a URL, URL with an ID, and you just pass this URL on the website, and people can go and see your uh, report if you have published it uh, publicly. Um, so, so there's lots of stuff to be done. Uh, obviously, as long as we, we, the first step is to build the database. Uh, I'm hope I'm can finish it before land, before squeeze. So we have something to collect the data, uh, which is really um, version 1.0 in Squeeze. You have some more questions? Okay. I'll update this wiki page, which is currently dummy, but uh, hardware database on the wiki will be the page uh, where we're going to...
back the, the status of this project. Thank you for your attention.